Right, um, yes. Uh, networks, firewalls, and then intrusion detection systems. Um, as I said, um, we've got uh, network-based and host-based uh, intrusion detection systems. And the uh, differentiation there is, is where do you place the sensor? Uh, and once again, you've got the, uh, if you're network based, um, uh, you see all the traffic. Now, um, this is interesting. I mean, uh, these days, um, the arguments about routers, gateways, uh, um, bridges, and, and so forth, um, uh, which used to be a really big deal, um, are all kind of academic because everybody uses switches these days. And the switches are getting so much, so capable. Um, a lot of the switches can, in fact, um, handle, uh, you know, application proxy uh, firewall functionality all by themselves um, to a certain extent. But... Um, it's interesting to note that there's, on a switch, there's like, you know, eight different ports that you can use to gain um, information about the, the traffic. Um, and uh, you have to look at all of them in order to get all the traffic. And, and so, you know, this, this business of you only see a you know, part of the traffic uh, on a host-based system, um, it's a reality because uh, you're only, you know, looking at one port there. Um, where when you're, you know, when you've got a network-based uh, intrusion detection system, you are uh, collecting from a variety of sensors and and looking at all the traffic. So, uh, okay, uh, but again, you're looking at it from in a sense, the outside. And so host-based, while it can't see all the traffic, can see uh, more information about what are, what are the implications of this packet going to be. Um, what uh, is it that we are detecting and, and how much of an impact, uh, how much of a vulnerability is this? So um, there's that. But there are other distinctions, and that comes to the, the engine of the intrusion detection system, the analysis that will be done on the data that's collected. And um, this breaks down into uh, three different types, generally speaking, which <laughs> is very interesting when you start your... Uh, career in virus research because there's three different types of malware detection. And the first, um, uh, the one that everybody thinks of first, is signature-based. And the signature-based detections is like signature-based malware. You look for a signature. You look for an identifying feature or string or, you know, some representation that uniquely and specifically tells you what this is. Uh, what type of attack, what type of malware. So, a signature, we can identify it. Um, but that is not the only form of malware detection, and it's not the only form of engine for an intrusion detection system. So we can look for an anomaly. And uh, here we have a situation with um, both firewalls and intrusion detection systems where we can set up a, uh, a system, an anomaly-based system, and we, uh, we don't really need to know anything to begin with. We just, set it up, collect the statistics on the traffic, on what we see, and 
um, that builds our uh, our rules. What we are looking for is a deviation from the data that we collect. So, um, outsized packets, too many packets in uh, a given space of time, um, you know, whatever it may be, all, all of this stuff, you know, we look at what is normal and then we look for anomalies. And uh, this is done with malware. Um, you sort of take a snapshot of the system and then you look for deviations of that. But of course, um, it could be that we uh, take a, uh, you know, collect data during a period when, for example, the network is quiet during the middle of the month. And when, then we come to month end and we've got all kinds of statistics and queries and what have you that are going on with regard to the normal month end business. But we haven't told the system that this is the normal month in business. And so the anomaly-based engine throws an alarm saying, you know, this is unusual. Well, you know, it's, it isn't unusual, it's just the month end. Or, uh, conversely, we have a situation where we, um, we install an anomaly-based engine, let it collect the data, and the period during which we let it collect data happens to be when we, unbeknownst to ourselves, are under attack. And so it sees the attack as normal. And so when it sees this attack again, it's not going to throw an alarm because we've told it this is normal. So, you know, we've got um, situations we need to be careful about in both sides of that. Um, but it does, you know, obviate the need for uh, signatures. Mind you, it also doesn't allow us to say what the attack is because we don't have a signature. We just know there is an anomaly. And then the last is behavior. Uh, and uh, again, we are looking at a, a more generic system where we're not saying we know what specifically the, this attack is the same way we don't know what specifically this malware is but we know it is behaving in a way that we don't think software should behave uh, for example uh, i can remember i happened to be testing a behavior blocker malware um, at one time and I was using uh, a word processing, a pizza word processing software to manage files. And so I had, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you know, file listing and access function on the, the word processor was uh, easier um, than using the standard commands for uh file management on this particular operating system. So I was using the word processor. And of course the system looks at this and sees why is a word processor deleting application files. And of course it blocked it. So, you know, that's, that's behavioral analysis there. Um, in the same way, uh, we can say that, okay, you know, there is a packet coming in and it is attempting to do this and it should do that, you know, that we're going to block that behavior. So again, the three different types of malware analysis and the three different types of intrusion detection engines.